me again, Emily O'Leary. I'm wondering if there's been any news. About me husband, what do you think? I've already told you twice. You should have it written down somewhere. His name's Tim O'Leary. He's 20 and he's been missing for days. And I want to know why you haven't found him yet. Where is he? He could be dead and you lot are doing nothing. <laughs> Have you been up all night? He's dead. Have the police been in touch? You heard what Christy said. He fell into the mercy. He's drowned. He's at the bottom of the Irish Sea somewhere. Look, love, there's no point giving up hope. It's been gone for days. And you don't seem worried. You don't even seem to care. Of course I care. I know you think everything's all right, Jim, but I need to know where he is. I'm going off to my mind. I can't live without him, Jimmy. I just can't. Time you up? Oh, quarter past three, ten to four, half four, quarter past five, and then at twenty past six, I just give up and brought them downstairs. Oh. Well, why don't you go upstairs and have a lie down? I don't need to be in work till eleven. No, I'm okay. Do you want a coffee? D no, never mind about that. Go upstairs and have a sleep. Max, I said I'm okay. Look, Jackie, you're not superwoman. I know how hard it is looking after two kids full time. I hope you're not going to start saying I can't cope again. I'm just, I'm just saying you should cut yourself some slack. You could have had him in with us. And that was exactly what he was after. I know. But once you start getting into that habit... Yeah, well, lots of people do it, don't they? I mean, they're never out of Susanna's bed. And that's a problem, isn't it? But I'm not Susanna. I know. Well, I've got different standards. My mum never let us get in her bed unless we were sick. Yeah, and you're not your mum either. You're just yourself. And you need a decent night's sleep. Which I can't get with Harry's elbows in my nose all night. And once we let Harry in, we'll have to let Emma in. OK, OK. If you're happy, then I'm happy. It'll be worth it in the end. Look, I was thinking about going down the health club this morning, near for a swim. Oh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Probably tire them out. Uh, no, without the kids. I meant for a bit of a break. I haven't been outside this house since Christmas Eve. Uh, I've got some paperwork to do. Well, if you could be back by 11 o'clock. Well, yeah, it'll only be an hour or so. Oh, well, I suppose they can watch their new videos, so, uh, yeah, could work in here. Thanks. He's a tough kid. He'll turn up, alive and well. And giving you down the banks for telling the busies and all. Yeah. Well, I'd rather have him in jail than in a box, Jimmy. <sighs> I just want him found. Hey, they'll find him. Don't you worry. Think he's got the shop, mate? Oh, thanks 
It's the weekend after Christmas. It'd have been a waste of time opening up anyway. Do you think? Well, everyone will be staying in, saving the money for New Year's Eve, won't they? Which is the biggest night of the year. We've got to be open by then. We will be. We've got all weekend to stock up. We haven't got any money to buy stock with. Well, all the air we've sold over the last few months, we must have some savings. Well, we haven't been saving, have we? We've been living the eye life. Well, what about all your investments? Thought you'd been speculating? I have. I just haven't been accumulating. Are you trying to pull a fast one? No. I'm sorry, Lee. I'll let you down. I've fritted all I'm on your way. Oh, we both have. I've fritted like there's no tomorrow. Well, it was good while it lasted. But it's over. We've got no money, no prospects, and a pub without any beer. Well, look on the bright side. We've both got each other. Well, that's more than Emily and Tink can say, isn't it? God rest his soul. Accept a reverse charge phone call from Tim O'Leary. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Yes! Hello? Oh, thank God. Where are you? Are you all right? <laughs> but there's busies crawling all over the place. I think Christy must have grasped me up. Em, I haven't got time for this. Look, you need to bring me some clothes. Yeah, be as quick as you can. Okay, I can be there in half an hour. Oh. Tra. Is he okay? I think so, yeah. He wants me to take him some clothes. Will you do us a big favour and pack us a bag and uh, call us a taxi while I can get changed? Yeah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Will you get into trouble speaking us in like this? In trouble with who? I still own the place, remember, and my mates can use my help club whenever they want. <laughs> oh, feel dead guilty leaving Beth with mine. Rachel's got to do his fair share. Being a mum and not a slave, don't forget. He'd only just got in from work when you called her and it was warm now. Yeah, well, he volunteered, didn't he? And you have to do the nights all on your own. Well, that's no problem, Grace. You sleep straight through. I had a terrible night last night with Harry. You must have had me up half a dozen times. Is he coming down with something? No, he's just playing up. He pretends and he's got tummy aches so we can get in with us. <laughs> Listen to us too. We must be boring you. No. I know what did we talk about before we had kids, eh? <laughs> I've got last week's tape behind money upstairs. How come you didn't put it in the safe? It just stopped me behind the January sales, but it doesn't matter now. We could use that to go to cash and carry with. Well, how much is it? I don't know. Well, go and find out. Wait a minute. I've just locked the door behind me, yeah? He was crawling with busies. Well, if you didn't mention the lorry, all they can prove is that he fell into the mercy. Well, that's not illegal, is it? <sighs> oh, it's a taxi. Come on. Here. Phone, keys. See you later.
righteous rain. Any problems I should know about? No. Nothing at all? No. But what about that receptionist if you had any more trouble off her? Well, she didn't turn in for work again on well, Christmas Eve. But it's not a problem. Again? How many times is that? Too many. Oh, she's getting beyond a joke. Oh, she's already had a written warning, hasn't she? Yeah. I'll have to have words that I'll tell her to sling it It's already done. Yesterday. You know, once Christmas was out of the way. Because I'm all heart, me. Believe it or not. See you later. See ya. This place is in good hands. Yeah, and he's a good manager. Not bad looking either. Um, you're married. And he's a married man. Because I always say him. Do you want to go back to talking about kids again? Uh, no, Jan, tell us about the song. Please tell us about the song. Dad? Oh, not yet. I've been worried sick about you. Are you alright? I am now. Thank you so much. I thought I'd lost you for good. I love you too. Come on, better get a move on eh? I'm gone. Let me just hold you for a minute. Come on, I have to get dressed. But we haven't seen each other for days. I know. But... And we've never done it in the back of an ambulance before. How well, was it there? Yeah. How much? 483 quid. Well, that's a start, I suppose. Well, we'll get what we can with it. We'll open up again on New Year's Eve. We'll flog the lot and double our money in no time. And then we're back in business. Nice one, Lee. There's no stopping us two, is there? Honey. I'm gonna find Christy Murray and break every bone in his body. Tim, it wasn't Christy who rushed up to the busies. I know, do you know? You've been missing for days. I thought you were dead. I just wanted someone to find you. It was you. I, I didn't tell him anything about the robbery. I just said that I, that I thought that you fell on the Maisie. So they just went looking for someone who'd been fished out in the past couple of days? And that led them straight to me. Well, it's really big trouble, haven't I? No, it's okay. If Christy hasn't said anything, well, it was just an accident as far as the business is concerned. I was panicking over nothing. Is it going to be all right then? For me and you, it is, yeah. Christy's another story. Well, why if he hasn't said anything? Because he left me to drown in the middle of the Mersey, that's why. He didn't try to save you? No, and the sooner I get my hands on the little creep, the better. Seventeen? Yep, and I bet you can't name them all. Um, all back of an ambulance. One. Susanna Morrissey's bedroom. Two. Thanks. It's just I got a Christmas call off your Lindsay and Carly, so I feel like I should write back to her. Oh, I've just put the kettle on if you fancy one. Hey, no, would you just give us her address? I said it'd be home an hour ago. Yeah. Hey, I used to have a kitchen like this. Did you? It's nice, isn't it? Tim got it. That drawer always used to stick on mine, though. Must be a design fault, that. Here we are, L. Lindsay. This is my old kitchen. Oh, they all look the same, don't they? <laughs> Kitchens. Here are 35 Inglemere Road, Bladen, Newcastle, BN 32, for QL. That's Dad and Soy Sauce Ring. Well, no one was using it. <laughs> 
and gone so Tim has pinched the kitchen from my old flat. Oh, you're not going to class him up, are you? It's just, he's had a bit of a hard time lately. Well, at least he's shown a bit of initiative, I suppose. So you're going to turn a blind eye? I suppose so, just this once. Get a good. Yeah, I'll write that down while I get that door. I'm jealous, actually. It's better than the old Clapto kitchen we've got. Who is it? I'll have a word with him if you like. Hello, kid. Is there um, any news about him yet? Just been talking about him to Jackie, funny enough. Turned up safe and sound this morning. Emily's gone to meet him. And what happened to him? Don't know. Come in and wait for them if you like. Just put the kettle on. Well, are you not able to give you back your internet stuff? Get yourself in there for a cup of tea. I'm not taking no for an answer. Jackie's already trying to get out of it. <laughs> oh, and um, Mick Johnson's garage. That's mine. Um, oh, the bathroom in our house as well. We've ever done them in the bathroom. That must have been someone else then. Hey, I caught the crash then. A litre of vodka. Some more vodka than whiskey, you know. Two litres of vodka, 1890. Sure, what this is like? What? Doing the shopping on Big Brother. Christy and Leanna failed this week's task. They have only £483 to spend on booze. I'm trying to concentrate. Sorry. Do you think we need alcohol pops? Looks like there's an accent out there. It's Tin Ed! He's alive! All right, Tin Ed! What happened to you? Does anyone need an ambulance? No. Did you know? <laughs> Leave her alone, What's you crack Jack! Get off me! Get back! <laughs> He's teaching them a lesson. You left me to die! I didn't! I... You ran off and left me to drown! Do you know what that feels like, eh? The lads you pinched the lads you caught up with and they dragged him away! By the time I'm finished with you, you're gonna know what it feels like! You tortured him! There was nothing he could do! No one runs out on me like that! You don't let go of him now, you sack pal! No! I've already resigned, pal! And he only owes me back pay for the last job I did for him. And danger money. This will do nicely. If you don't give that back now, I am going to tear the face off your bimbo bride. Oh, just you try it. Let him have it. Are you off your head? Let him have it! I'm going to take it all right. And if you ever mess me around again, I'll kill you. So, have you made any resolutions then, Jim? Oh, well, I've got one in mind, yeah. Well, are you going to spill the beans or is it a secret? Not sure it was you and your essay that got me thinking about it, to be honest. Oh, which one? The one about medicating away legitimate pain. When I was getting all that stuff off the internet for you, I came across this really interesting web page run by this radical bipolar fella. Now, he reckons that you are entitled to your own feelings. And any drug that interferes with that is a breach of your human rights. You're not thinking of coming off your medication, though, are you? Thinking of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The kids been good? No, they've been fighting the whole time. Oh, they're getting to be just like me and our Mike used to be. Hey, listen, now that we've got the plan and permission, let's get started on the extension, eh? Jackie, where have you been? Well, I popped into Jimmy's. You should see the new kitchen they've got, but you won't believe. I thought you'd gone swimming. Well, I did. I went with Casey and Rachel, but on the way back... Well, you could have swam the channel the whole time you've been out. Well, I'm sorry, but we had a sauna and a massage and a good old goss in the spa, and I'd popped in at the office. <sighs> and now not only am I late for the opening, but... Well, I haven't been able to finish my paperwork. Well, I've said I'm sorry. And you said you'd only be an hour. Do you know, I go up with my mates for the first time in ages. You saw your mates yesterday. What is up, Max? Did you actually have to look after your own children for a whole morning? Well, now you know what it feels like. I already know what it feels like. It's you who's just finding that out. I have been stuck in this house for days and you begrudge me one morning. No, I don't begrudge you it. I know how hard and how boring it is for you, but when I've got to work, I've got to work. Then get to work. You're already late, aren't you? Keep your voice down. If you wanted more time, we could have arranged something. You know the kind of nice I've had. Yes, and I know how much of a struggle it is for you, but, Chucky, why don't you just admit it to yourself that you're not cut out to be a stay-at-home mum? You don't think I can do it? No, there's millions of brilliant mothers who don't feel they've got to prove anything by staying at home the whole time. I am not trying to prove anything. You are overcompensating. Look, I'm not saying it's easy. Nothing worth doing ever is. But I've made my decision and I'm sticking with it, OK? All right, Jim. Oh, look who it is. You OK, then? Yeah, just like you said, nothing to worry about. 
Well, he's going to tell us what's happened. No. <sighs> hey, I know the other one. The hotel in Blackpool. That's 16. <laughs> what hotel in Blackpool? One more. Here's a clue. No. Come on. No. And if you don't get it, there won't be an number 18. Just leave them to it. They'll be okay. <sighs> and so are you. You're fit, you're healthy, and you're coping. Why do you want to change all that? Cos ends up back on the roof. You've been on a roof. It was the worst time in my life. Yeah, and you felt that bad, you thought about jumping? Yeah, and I don't want to go through that again. Yeah, well, nobody wants to feel bad, but, you know... Would you rather not give a toss? I've been raped, doesn't matter, I'll get over it. Is that better? You had a right to feel bad. No, well, it's a different thing. I felt bad because of something that happened to me. And in the end, I could get my head around it, come to terms with it. But well, they reckon depression is totally different. <gasps> Who reckons? Well, the doctors. Well, if your biochemicals are all out of balance, well, then you can't just get your head around it and come to terms with it. You need medication to get them back in balance. Says <laughs> it. Drug companies who want a fat profit. Look, Jimmy, I'm, I'm way on my depth here. I'm just a second-year psychology student. But listen, you've got to promise me, if you are serious about coming off your medication, you've got to talk to your doctor first, talk to the experts. This fell off the internet, it could be any art crackpot. Nikki, I've been thinking about it a lot. And what it comes down to is this. I want to get back to the old Jimmy Corkill. Whee! I hope you got your pulling pants on tonight. Because your luck's gonna be in, matey. Well, you tell me how to run a bar with no booze, then. It's like trying to run a brothel with no prozzies. I'm calling the police. So what? I'll get it off you, then. You and who's army? The Matthew Murray's your dad's scrubber. And who's fault, Sally? That's it for Brookside this year. Next year it moves to its new regular days of Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So the next visit is on Wednesday the 2nd of January at 8. Next tonight, Graham Norton meets Dolly Parton.